Well, here I am next to our wood pile. I'm just enjoying life. You know, winter is coming, and we always have the same question every year. Do we have enough wood to get through? And with the generosity of some friends, we have plenty of wood for this year and for next. But this year, sometimes I wonder if I just have enough to get through. Is that how you feel? Whether you just have enough to get through? Is there enough when it comes to just your energy? Is there enough when it comes to just getting through today, the worry, the anxiety? Just this week, we found out that somebody in our household tested positive for COVID, which means the rest of us are going to be quarantined for well over 14 days. What does that mean? It means our vacation's canceled. It means that all of a sudden, here we are, and yet there's so many reasons not to be thankful, and yet it's Thanksgiving. We're supposed to be thankful. How do I do that? Well, it's how we measure our day, isn't it? Jesus said in Matthew 6, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow has enough problems of its own. And so maybe I'm just supposed to think about today. So my question is, how do you measure today? How do you measure today? How do you measure whether you have a tank that's full or a tank that's empty or running on fumes or just as if the gas is just getting sucked out? How do you measure your day? So often many of us figure out that this day is just shot. You know, you wake up, you go to work, and right as you get into your car, you notice that you have a flat tire. Or you notice that it won't start. Or you have those words between you and your kid or between you and your spouse. And it just kind of puts a damper on the whole day. And all of a sudden, things just seem to pile up. There are people that say, I should have just stayed in bed when I found out this. How do you decide what a good day is and what a bad day is? Because we're supposed to measure each day independently, each day, and not worry about what's happening in the future, but just handle each day as it comes. I like what James chapter 1 tells me. Because James chapter 1 tells me that no matter the circumstance, no matter what's going on in my life, I should still have a measure of joy in it. I should still be able to be thankful. This is what it says, starting in verse 2. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Did you see that last phrase? Not lacking anything. And then at the beginning of it, it says, Consider pure joy when you face trials. What's the catch? Because I don't feel joy. And when I'm going through hard times, I feel like I'm lacking something. And yet here, James is trying to tell us as believers that because we have Jesus, because we have God's promises, because of his faithfulness, because we will be able to walk through whatever trial, whatever circumstance, knowing that God is on our side, guess what? I will come through on the other side and realize... I wasn't lacking anything after all, which actually brings Psalm 23, chapter 1, a realization of truth. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. You see, when I start to walk through life with God, then I start to understand his faithfulness and his promises and all that he offers me, all of a sudden, I won't feel like I lack anything because God will be enough. He will be enough to get me through today. He'll get be enough to help me figure out how to handle this relationship by using his principles. He'll be enough when it comes to when I'm fighting against the sin, this addiction, this hardship. Whenever I'm feeling like I'm lacking, God says, I will provide. You see, how do we lack nothing? We find that in Jesus, we really do lack nothing as he is our shepherd. In Ephesians 1, 3, we find that Christ gives me every spiritual blessing. It says this, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Every spiritual blessing that I have. 
everything that I get, the fulfillment of the promises, the peace that God gives me, the gift of the Holy Spirit, the ability to be called a child of God, to know that I am able to overcome the evil and the sin in this world, the ability for me to understand and to see things differently is all because of my relationship with Jesus Christ. You see, that is my spiritual blessing. All of a sudden, I am complete. But what about my physical needs? Well, in Philippians 4, we find Paul say this. I know what it is to be in need. I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. And then he goes on and he talks about how the people, the Philippian church had given him enough and provision to help him get through his hard times because he's in prison. He's seeing this in prison, by the way. And then he says this at the end of that in verse 19, and my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. You see, Christ meets all of our needs. And he says this, I can do all this. What is this? The ability to overcome whether I'm hungry or well-fed, whether I am in plenty or in want, I have the strength because God meets all my needs. So I don't know where you're at today. I don't know how empty or full your tank is, but I want you to realize Jesus is here and he's on your side. At the beginning of Jesus' great sermon in Matthew 5-7 through 7, called the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus' introduction to a sermon is a call to all those who feel like their tank is half empty or empty or on fumes or just parked next to the road with nothing more to give. And I want you to look at these Beatitudes. It's the one that says, bless are the ones and then for they shall, you know. I want you to think of it in terms of a good or bad day. I want you to think of it about whether or not God is with you or not, whether your tank is really empty, whether his promises are really that lacking, because this is what Jesus says. If you are having a bad day because you are poor in spirit, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. If you are having a bad day and you are mourning, remember, you will be comforted. If you are having a bad day because you are meek and feel like you are being stepped on, remember, you will inherit the earth. If you are having a bad day because you are hungering and thirsting to do the right thing for right with righteousness, remember, you will be filled. If you are having a bad day because you are being merciful to others, remember, you will be shown mercy as well. And if you are having a bad day because you are being pure in heart and people are minimizing you and not feel, making you feel important, remember, you will see God. And if you are having a bad day because you are a peacemaker, always trying to mend the fences, remember, you will be called a child of God. And if you are having a bad day because you're per persecuted for doing the right thing, remember, yours is the kingdom of heaven. Do you see how all of a sudden I can look at life differently? Because God is with me. I'm not alone. He's on my side. As the scriptures say, if God is for us, who can be against us? If God's promises are real, then why should I worry? Why should I be filled with anxiety? But yet we are. You see this whole second wave of COVID that's coming in and it's going crazy right now in our counties. Just means that more anxiety and worry is going to come. In fact, Healthline.com had an article just a couple weeks ago by Nancy, I'm going to ruin her word, her last name, Shemelfring, I think it's her name. Anyway, she writes this article on how mental illness is going to be harder, and she interviews two doctors. She interviews Ken Yeager, who is at Ohio State, and also um, Corrine Keenman, 
a specialist in, in Houston, and, and they go through all that's going on, and they give all these suggestions of how to overcome the anxiety in your life. And I want you to realize, as I'm reading these, each one of those, each one of these is answered in how we live out our faith in Jesus Christ. So we're going to go through them to help you understand what can I do when I feel overwhelmed with worry, stress, anxiety, when I don't know what to do. This is what the experts say, but it's also what God says. So they start out with this, build your resilience. Jaeger says, find things that build positive energy for you. And God says, remember my promises. Remember my love. Remember my salvation. That will get you resilient. The second one is reach out to others in kind ways. Seek to find the good in what you are doing every day is what they said. Well, that sounds like Jesus. Doesn't he say love and serve others? Put your attention on others rather than on your predicament and all of a sudden things will change. They continue on, limit your screen time. You're not hearing more news. You're just hearing the same bad news over and over, the doctor says, Dr. Yeager says. You know what God says? Read my word. Fill your mind with what is noble and pure and right and good. Fill your mind with things that are filled with hope. He continues on. Engage in hobbies. Jaeger suggests activities like painting, gardening, playing games, doing puzzles, other tasks which engage your brain. You know what God says? Work as if working for the Lord. Love people. Use your spiritual gifts and your abilities. And he also says there is benefit in working with your hands and engaging your mind. The doctors continue to say, understand that politics are just that. Use your own mind to understand what your vote should be. This was before the election. And he goes on with all of that, but this is what I want you to understand. God says, remember, you are a citizen of the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God first. Remember that all of this all has a self-destruct sabotage button in it because of our sinfulness. But God is over all of it and he is planning for Jesus to return and to give us hope of a new life in heaven. So remember, you are a citizen of heaven. They continue on. Prioritize taking care of yourself. Keenman suggests having a healthy daily routine, seeking to find balance in your life. What does God say? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then in the Shema in Deuteronomy 6, it says, talk about it in the morning, in the afternoon, and in the evening. Everything you do should be engaged somehow with your faith. They continue on. Check in on your thoughts. As humans, we tend to be overly focused on what is going well, Kingman said. Keep a journal. Spend some time reflecting on what's good in your life. This is where God says, be thankful in all circumstances. Because guess what you have? You have me, your creator God, who loves you so much, where you have a Savior who saves you so we can be with together for all eternity. They continue on. Recognize you are not alone. Many people are suffering right now. And you are not alone in your pain, said Keenman. You know what God says? I've given you my Savior to prove my love. I've given you my Holy Spirit to say that I am living in you, to encourage you, to remind you that I am here. But not only that, I have given you your church. The church of Jesus Christ, God's church, is an assembly of people who have common faith to do what? To encourage, to build, to bear one another's burdens. We don't have to be alone. We have to reach out. Then he continues on. Try starting a meditation or mindful practice. So they're saying, take some time in quiet. That's what God says. Pray. Pray to me. Spend some time. Lock yourself in the closet and just pray and pour out your heart to me. And just think about my truths. I love how Psalm 119 says, I will meditate on your commands, on your precepts. I will just think about the goodness of your promises. And then finally they say, seek help if you need it. If your thoughts are getting away from you, God says, seek help. Go to your brother. Bear one another burdens. But sometimes health needs a professional. I've needed a professional in my life to walk me through some hard times. Maybe you do too. 
because God gives you the tools to flourish. You see, God has given you everything. You see, there are so many reasons why we can be thankful because God is with us. But now that we have reasons for God to, for, to be thankful, and now that our tank is full and is filled, guess what? Now our reasons as to why to have a good day changes. Now we need to become the reason for others to be thankful. You need to become the reason for other people to be thankful, to have their tank filled. So how do we do that? We do that by taking on the same attitude of Jesus Christ. You see, Philippians 2, 1 through 5 says this, Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any sharing in his spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, you know what it says? If you have this, if you have this, if you have this, and if you have this. Guess what? We just covered that we have all those things. So what do we do about it? We continue on in verse 2. Then, make my joy complete, being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and one in mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Jesus Christ. Did you see what it's saying right there? It's crazy. If we have been given so much so my tank is full, guess what? Then I should become the reason for someone else to be thankful today. The responsibility now comes on me because my tank has been filled. And in fact, it's overflowing with gratitude and thanksgiving for all that God has given to me. I am thankful for a coat, which I'm not wearing and I'm starting to get cold. I should be, I'm thankful that I have a house, that I have shoes, that I have a hat, which I wish I was wearing right now. I am thankful I have all those things. And guess what? You can be thankful too. You can be thankful too. So thankful that now your drive in life is not just to move from the survival mentality of I need to get through today because God is there to help you, so you will. My attitude is I just need to get through this COVID because God says, don't worry about tomorrow. I'll be with you every step of the way. I no longer have to be in this mindset of survival and protective and everything comes in and you circle the wagons and how am I going to survive? Rather, I start to think differently. And you know how I think? If God has blessed me, how can I bless others? How can I be the reason for others to be thankful? My question is, how can you? You see, too often... We think of Thanksgiving as a reflective time where I just think of how God has blessed me, how others have blessed me. There are so many of you have been such a blessing to me. Thank you for loving on my family and I. Thank you for how you watch out for us and take care of us. Thank you because you have given me a reason to be thankful. Is there someone else that you need to become a reason for them to be thankful? Because there are lonely people filled with anxiety, filled with worry, filled with uncertainty. Their health is in question or the family, family's health is in question. And guess what? Maybe you need to be that person that brings the needs that Jesus wants to offer them to them. Maybe you're the vehicle for them to find thankfulness in God. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we're so thankful for you, for loving us, for caring for us, for taking care of us, for providing for us, for giving us every spiritual blessing and meeting all of our needs, and for helping us see that when we go through tough circumstances, you are the one where we find that we really were lacking nothing, but you gave us enough to get through. Thank you.
Lord, thank you for the church that you've given to us so that we can care for one another and show how you care for us in a way that we can care for each other. But Lord, open our eyes this week, this Thanksgiving week where so many people are lonely, isolated, quarantined, hurt. And Lord, I just pray that you might allow for us to become a reason for others to be thankful. Oh Jesus, we love you. And thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The first step to finding thankfulness every day is to realize that Jesus is your Savior. All the spiritual blessings you don't get without making Jesus your Lord and Savior. All the needs that God wants to give to you, sometimes you miss out because you're not following Jesus. Maybe it's time for you to consider making Jesus your Lord and Savior. And if you would like that, please let us know because we would love to walk you through what that means. You can just contact us at office at sheldonchurch.com or go to a website, sheldonchurch.com and just hit the contact button. And we would love to connect with you to help you get to know who Jesus is.